Welcome to the TIFF Bell White Box. Uh, my name is Lydia Oguang and I'm a member of the programming team here at TIFF Cinematech. Um, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to tonight's program of films by Isaac Julian, um, including Territories, The Attendant, and Looking for Langston, uh, with very special guests in attendance to do an introduction for us, Dr. Ronaldo Walcott. Um, so to begin, I would like to acknowledge that tonight's event is taking place on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat. And we are very grateful to have the opportunity uh, to work in this community. On behalf of TIFF, I would like to thank our lead sponsor, Bell, our major sponsors, RBC, L'Oreal Paris, and Visa, and our public supporters, Ontario Creates and Canada Council for the Arts. As a charitable organization, we would also like to thank our donors and members for making TIFF's year-round programming and educational and community outreach initiatives possible. Um, so tonight's screening is part of our Black Star program, and this program was inspired by the British Film Institute's 2016 season of the same name. Um, and this is actually TIFF's second iteration of the series. We ran one last fall as well, so we're continuing continuing on this year, um, celebrating black excellence on the big screen. Uh, after tonight's screening, we do have one other screening remaining. Uh, tomorrow night at 6 p.m. we are screening a film called Tell Me Sweet Something, which is a beautiful South African rom-com um, from Akino Motoso, who is a director who has had many of his films play in uh, the festival. So we're screening his latest film. Hope to see you all there. Um, but tonight we do have our wonderful program of films by Isaac Julian. I do want to um, note that two of the films will be screening as prints as well. We have, uh, I believe, The Attendant on 35 millimeter and Looking for Langston on 16 millimeter. So it's quite a treat. Um, and at this time, I'd like to welcome uh, our guest to the stage. So Dr. Ronaldo Walcott is a professor and the director of Women and Gender Studies Institute at the University of Toronto. His most recent book is Queer Returns, Essays on Multiculturalism, Diaspora, and Black Studies. Please welcome to the stage, Dr. Ronaldo Walcott. Thank you, Lydia. Um, I'd like to thank Tiff for inviting me to offer this brief introduction of Isaac Julian's work, in particular, um, co-director Cameron Bailey, who suggested that I, I might be someone who might could do this. Um, it seemed like fun to suggest to come and introduce the work of Isaac Julian, um, and then you try to get your thoughts together and you realize, damn. <laughs> Anyhow, so here it goes. Um, Isaac Julian is the crown prince of black queer cinema with no match. It is impossible to conceive of black queer cinema without going through Isaac Julian. We do not get to moonlight without passing through the oof of Isaac Julian. Since the 1980s, Julian has been producing film art that has changed the terms of black representation, especially where sexuality meets blackness. Julian's film art has inaugurated a conversation on black diaspora representations of sexuality and masculinity that has complicated our feel of the visual. Julian has given us a visual language of black diaspora queer life that is rich with desire, longing, joy, sadness, intellectual curiosity, and new ways of apprehending the self. Julian does so with a cinematic practice as attuned with a sly anti-capitalist critique, always hinting at a more possible future to come. Isaac Julian is a 1980s graduate of Central St. Martin School of Art and Design, London, England. He's an important member of the black British new wave of intellectuals and artists whose work crossed the Atlantic in the 1980s, renewing, reshaping, and resignifying debates, not just about representation, but importantly, about the work of representation. Representation, sorry. The leading intellectual figure of the group, the late Stuart Hall, a theorist and cultural producer himself, is central to making sense of Julian's work. Hall will appear in cameo in at least one of these films. Among, th among that black British new wave of scholars, are the scholars, I'm sorry, some of whom study with Hall, Hazel Carby, Paul Gilroy, who's gonna be in town soon, Kabina Mercer, William Winston James, Errol Lawrence. Among the artists of this new wave are 
Sonia Boyce, Sanil Gupta, Pratiba Pamar, John Akamfra, Keith Piper, and the late Rutini Fanny Coyote, among numerous others, and of course Isaac Julian. The impact of this British new age of intellectuals and artists on debates concerning representation, blackness, what Stuart Hall will later dub new ethnicities, art making, a renewed and sustained study of black diaspora movements, and to adapt and to adopt Stuart Hall, thinking within and against the nation cannot be underestimated. Indeed, my own scholarship has been animated by this Atlantic crossing for more than two decades now. After being introduced to this work by my friend and U of T colleague Cass Bannon in the early 1990s when I was a grad student. Julian's art practice is now centered in the art gallery and museum and still draws on the moving image to present multi-channel, multi-video installations of monumental size and scope that continue to engage the politics of representation, capitalism, art history, and critical theory as foundational to the story of what it means to be human. This art practice cannot be divorced from his foundational film work. Mark Nash's longtime partner and producer is an important part of the narrative that seeks to offer full pictures of, of Julian's profound impact on cinema in the last 30 plus years. The three films we'll view tonight represent a slice of Julian's contributions to the film essay genre to borrow from Ursula Beeman. Territories comes out of the San Colfer and Black Audio Film Collective period, along with films like Passion of Remembrance and Hansworth Songs, both of 1996. Julian's feature Young Soul Rebels, a clan selection, and his documentaries, The Darker Side of Black and Trans Fanon, Black Skin, White Mass, are just a sample of Julian's works worth viewing and engaging, in which you always find some kind of sly shot or scene in them that plays with form or ideas. So territories, um, Cabina Mercer, Cass Bannon, and others have described territories as a dialogic film text the juxtapositions in the work moving across carnival, policing, surveillance, and civil unrest speaks powerfully to the moment that we presently find ourselves in. The Attendant is probably one of my favorite Julian films. It's difficult to reign of representation and the struggle over representation restages the afterlife of slavery, not on the plantation, but in the space of the museum. Bridging the pleasures of s and practice that recall the brutal realities of plantation violence, the attendant complicates desire, history, pleasure, and pain. The attendant is a filmic text or video essay that in its re-engagement with transatlantic slavery places front and center the difficult politics of representation across cross-racial cross sex and desire. All of this is done in the context of HIV AIDS, and thematized through a history and logic of slavery and its after effects as not simply behind us. This short work pushes against logics of black nationalism that would return black queers to the closet. What does a black queer s and practice look like? Is it even possible? Can black diaspora people love and, can black, black, sorry, can black diaspora people love and, and sex beyond the impact of slavery and its afterlife? What is the place of the museum and art in the difficult politics of representation? How might black artists reclaim and remake, but also offer up new modes of representation? And where in all of this might be fine liberation? The attendant forces these questions upon us. Looking for Langston confronts the problem of representation head on in a way that is intellectually risky, cinematically daring, and lushly beautiful. A work that on the surface appears to be one that takes the sexuality of the African-American poet Langston Hughes as a starting point, Julian offers us instead a meditation on the Harlem Renaissance and mid-1980s to, late to the late 1980s black gay men's coming into self. When the Hughes estate refused the new self of his poetry in the film, Julian turned to the poetry of the late S.S. Hemphill as the supplement, replacing the father Hughes with the son Hemphill. The station of tableau and dream sequences refuse straight documentary practices in favor of cinematically reimagining or imagining the problem of representation in the first instance. Representation is not so much refused as much as we're offered in representation what we might have needed in that moment. As the important African-American critic Henry Luce Gates put it in his review of the film at the time in the now defunct Village Voice, 
we go looking for Langston and we find Isaac. We cannot view these works without thinking the time of AIDS, a time that in our era of protease inhibitors, some might think is behind us. But these three works offer us a meditation on the times and troubles of AIDS in powerful visuality. By 1995, with the arrival of what we then call the cocktail that interrupted the, death call by, the deaths caused by AIDS, Julian was plotting to walk away from filmmaking and turn to the museum and art gallery as the site for his practice. AIDS had decimated a whole generation of black gay men, Hemp Hill, Joseph Beam, and Martin Riggs, whose film Tongues on Tide premiered the same year as Julian's Looking for Langston. Often compared in black film history, their modes of confronting the politics of representation signify the very kinds of black difference that black British intellectuals and artists crossing the Atlantic in the 1980s and early 1990s demanded we attend to. Julian's impact proliferates. Take as one example, Cheryl Dunne's Watermelon Woman, where in the background of one scene, there's a poster of the attendant. I would argue that light and the use of light in, in Barry Jenkins' Moonlight draws inspiration from Julian's Young Soul Rebels and looking for Langston. Again, you cannot arrive at black queer film without coming through Julian as influence or counterpoint. Julian's films help to produce how a, how a diaspora consciousness and sensibility might find its way in the film it takes. Speaking very personally, I could not have done the scholarship and cultural analysis that I continue to do for over two decades now without this work. Black British insights on the politics of diaspora, the work of representation, the troubling of modernity and its multiple forms has had a profound impact on black Canadian criticism and cultural production, explicit and not so explicit. These works of Julian stand the test of time because of the subtle ways in which he marks time, remakes and plays with history and place, and by so doing on earth the multiple intimacies of our encounters of and in the modern world. If the fluid exchanges, if fluid exchanges mark the time of AIDS and the time of Julian's film art, fluid exchange now also mark how we might. Fuel exchange now also how we might view these works across time and in the time and in the time of further fluid exchanges. That of a that of drug and that of sorry, let me repeat that. The, across and in the time of further fluid exchanges, that of a drug and sex crisis quietly rocking the lives of black gay men right here in our own city to end on such a troubled note. So please enjoy the films and thank you. <laughs>